In this video, we're going to discuss acids and bases. Originally, the terms acid and base referred to taste, the practice of classifying substances according to their acidic or sour, basic or bitter properties dates back to ancient times. An acid was something with a sour taste, such as lemon juice, and a base was something with a bitter taste, such as tonic water. We're going to explore the relationship between the molecular structure um, and acids and bases and consider aqueous solutions or water solutions of acids and bases. So before we get started um, on looking at what are acids and bases, something that you should know is that if we have an aqueous solution, it is considered acidic if the hydrogen ion concentration is greater than the hydroxide ion concentration. We have a basic solution if the hydroxide ion concentration is greater than the hydrogen ion concentration. If those concentrations are equal, we have a neutral solution. So let's take a look at how these hydrogen and hydroxide ions play a role in acids and bases. We're going to take a look at two of the definitions of acids and bases. The first being the Arrhenius definition. Actually, Arrhenius, Bronsted, and Lowry were all working on acids and bases at the same time, and they came up with two different uh, theories or definitions of what they are. So, an Arrhenius acid is a compound that contains hydrogen, and it's going to yield hydrogen ions in solution. An Arrhenius base is one that contains a hydroxyl or an OH group, and it's going to yield those hydroxide ions in aqueous solution. Now, the thing about Arrhenius acids, it must be uh, an aqueous solution. Aqueous solution. And what I mean by that is that water is the solvent. So if I was to take a look at an acid, <clears throat> I'll take a look at an acid such as HCl and water is our solvent, we're going to release hydrogen ions and chloride ions in solution. So here we have our acid. For a base, it has to be a base that has a hydroxide. So these are mainly metal hydroxides uh, for compounds with metals in groups 1A and 2A. So if I have sodium hydroxide dissolved in water, I'm going to get sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So here we have our base. And notice for our acid, we've got hydrogen ions in solution. And for our base, we have hydroxide ions in solution, okay? So water is the solvent, and essentially it's just if I take an acid or a base, dump it in water, what happens? They dissociate into their individual ions. Okay, Bronsted-Lowry definition helps us to describe why ammonia is actually a base, right? So Arrhenius definition limits us to using water as a solvent, water solutions, and it doesn't help explain why some compounds with amine or NH groups are considered as bases. So let's take a look at the Bronsted-Lowry definition. And a Bronsted-Lowry acid is one in which it has to contain hydrogens because it's going to donate those hydrogens in solution. And we can say those hydrogens are considered, they must be hydrogen ions. 
and we call those protons. Okay? A Bronsted Lowry base now is one that essentially accepts those protons. So an acid donates protons, whereas a base is going to accept protons. So let's take a look at our Bronsted Lowry acid and base. So for our acid, for our acid, what we're going to show here for Bronsted Lowry is that instead of water being the solvent, water is actually involved in the acid base reaction. Okay, here we have hydrochloric acid reacting with water and we've got to have a proton donor, which is our acid, that's going to donate its protons to the water. And so we end up with hydronium ion plus Cl minus. So this is our hydronium ion. And we essentially say that hydronium and a proton and a hydrogen ion are the same. So we can say proton equals hydrogen ion equals hydronium. Essentially because hydrogen ions, they are so attracted to water molecules that they are not found freely floating in solution. They're always going to be bound to hydronium. So notice that in this situation, water, hydrochloric acid donated its hydrogen to the water. So in this situation, what we can say here is that we've got two species in this reaction. HCl is the acid, whereas water is acting as a base. And because it's acting as a base, it can accept the proton. Let's take a look at a base and see how it reacts with water. So we'll take a look at ammonia. And we know that it does not contain hydroxide ions, but we do know that it's a base. The Bronsted-Lowry definition helps us to explain why. So once again, water is a part of our reaction. And here, I'm going to draw a forward and reverse arrow because this is, a, this is a base that is very weak. And so an equilibrium sets up. So although it can react with water, an equilibrium sets up, whereas we have over here with our over here with our hydrochloric acid we don't have a forward and reverse arrow because this is a strong acid and it's going to completely dissociate into its ions all right let's go back over here to ammonia so what happens we know that ammonia is a base so it is going to accept a proton well, water is the only other hydrogen-containing compound that's capable of donating the water. So what do we end up with here? We end up, end up with NH4 plus and hydroxide ion. Okay? So what species do we have here? So the ammonia is acting as the base, while water is acting as the acid to donate that proton to the base. Notice here also that hydroxide ion is produced 
but only due to the reaction between the ammonia and the water. So we do end up with hydroxide ions in solution, and we can compare the hydroxide ion versus, versus the hydrogen ion concentration to get the pH of this solution.